Hey, so since we have learned about data types in programming, now it's time for us to learn about type conversions. So the term itself says that it's nothing but converting one data type into another, converting the variable of one data type into another data type. So now, so in this video, so in this video we'll be seeing how to uh, do type conversion in Java and in the next video we'll be seeing the same but in Python. So first of all, why should we uh, convert the data type from one data type to another? Well, this is why. Because many times in your program you may have that need to convert one data type into another data type. So this might, this necessity might occur to you many times uh, while writing a program. So in such cases, for example, you have an integer data type value, an integer data type variable which has an integer data type value stored in it. And for some reason in your program you want to convert it into uh, a decimal number or a double uh, data type value. So you have to perform type conversion. Similarly, if you have a double data type value and if you want to convert it into a integer data type value, you have to you have to perform type conversion again. So yeah, there are you may feel so yeah, you will definitely have many cases where you have that necessity of converting values from one data type to another data type. So that's why we do type conversion in programming and programming languages, uh, different programming languages has, has uh, you know, they have different ways of performing type conversion. Obviously, it all depends on their syntax and how they're, how they are designed actually. So in this video, we'll, we'll be learning uh, how to do type conversion in Java. So let's get started. So for example, first of all, let me, uh, this is the template by the way. And here you can see this are the basic data types which we have already discussed. And one more thing here, you can see that I have typed in two slashes like this. So you might be asking what are these two slashes because I've never uh, I've never talked about these these two slashes right there. Well, uh, these two slashes indicate a comment in Java. So a comment is nothing but basically for you to uh, write a comment and this this line over here will not be considered by the compiler which means you can write anything after these two slashes anything uh, it doesn't have to be a Java code you can write basically anything you can you can write notes you can write comments explaining your code basically anything and it will not be considered while the compilation which means a compiler will not include this line while compli while compiling the whole program so that's why i have uh, used the comment here to just you know show you the basic data types that we have discussed so one data type here is missing which is boolean but uh, i'll tell you why we are missing boolean here but it's it's important for you to remember the basic data types these are the basic data types byte short char int long float and double now uh, it's important for you to remember these data types, but it's also important for you to remember them in this order right here. This is the hierarchy of data types and you have to remember uh, this order right here. So what I mean by this hierarchy of data types is that these th this is the highest data type we have which is double and this is the lowest data type we have which is byte. So if, if you want to convert one data type value into another data type value, uh, this is what you need to do. So for example, if you, if you have a short data type value and if you want to convert it into, for example, let's say a float data type value, uh, you don't need to do any explicit type conversion, which means you do not need to explicitly define in your program that you want to convert short into float. Because notice here that short is lower than float here. So vice versa, let's say you have a float and you want to convert float data type value into a short data type value. In this case, you have to explicitly mention that you want to convert a float data type into a short data type because you can notice here float is higher than short. So that is why this hierarchy of uh, of these data types are important to remember uh, you know based on this hierarchy of data types you will be able to uh say if you really need to explicitly define type conversion in your program or will it automatically get converted uh, by the compiler so the smaller data types uh, when you're comp uh, i mean when you're uh, converting a smaller data types into a higher data type you don't need to explicitly define because it's done automatically whereas if you want to convert a higher data type value into a lower data type value in that case, you need to explicitly mention that you want to convert. So for example, uh, let's say I have an integer data type int a equal to 
3. Now let's say I want to convert int a equal to 3 into a double value. So if I say something like double b and if I just give double b equal to a, so what I, sorry, uh, small a. So what I just did, what I, or what I tried to do right now is I'm trying to assign the value of, uh, of a to a newly created variable b which is of double type and notice here a is an integer data type and b is a double data type so there's a difference in data type here so and you have to also notice that we did not explicitly do any type conversion here all we did was just initialize initialize create a variable named b of double data type and initialize it with a value which is a and the value is an integer value so let's go ahead and compile this and let's see what what we will be able to get so i'll compile the file and you know how to compile the file it's java c followed by the name of the file which is type conversion dot java right so wait 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 i actually gave a wrong class name i have to give java data types here because data types is the name of the class uh all right so you can see that there is no error uh here at all so first of all uh what i've done is i've created a in integer data type value and i've initialized it with three and then double d b equal to a right now this is what I'm talking about. Why did we have a no error uh, shown here? Now this is not the error. This is the error that I committed because I've given type conversion as the class name, whereas data types is actually the class name. So that's not the error. Uh, forget about this part over here. This is the compilation and this is the execution of the program. And you can see the compilation gave no errors and the execution also gave no errors, which means we have successfully, I mean, this, 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 these two lines over here are correct. And what we did here is we created a double data type uh, variable and we assigned an integer data type value to it. And as I've told you earlier, double is a higher data type. It's indeed the highest data type uh, in the hierarchy. And integer is a lower data type as compared to double. It's over here. So when we are converting an integer integer value to a double value, we don't need to explicitly do anything as I've told you earlier. So we did not do anything. We just right away gave it like that. And there we go. That's it. No error shown. It's it's great. It's okay. Now, uh, let me uh, do vice versa. Let's change uh, int to double and let's give this as a double 3.2. And here let's change this to int. So what I did now is just opposite to what I've done earlier. So I've created a, uh, I've created a double data type uh, variable named A and initialized it with the value 3.2. And then I've created an integer data type variable B and uh, assigned the value of A, which is 3.2, which is in the double data type, to this integer data type uh, variable. Now let's go ahead and let's uh, compile the program. Let's clear the screen and let's compile the program to see what happens. All right, so there we go. Uh, while compiling the program, it gave me an error that says incompatible types possible lossy conversion from double to end. So that's because that's because we are converting, uh, uh, you know, a higher data type value, which is double into a lower data type value which is an end. So while doing this, as I mentioned earlier, we have to explicitly convert. It's it cannot be automatically done by the, uh, the compiler, right? So we have to explicitly do this. So how do you explicitly convert uh, at one type from, from one type to another type? So that is over here when you are uh, assigning the value of uh, uh, A to the integer data type value B, you have to, you know, type in brackets, uh, open and close flower bra uh, brackets like that. And inside this uh, parenthesis or brackets, whatever you like to call it, you have to type in the data type to which you want to convert it. So in this case, we want to convert this double to what data type? Yes, it is integer data type. So I, would, I have to type in int in the brackets, right, like this. And that's it. So what we have done is we are saying int b equal to a. And we are also explicitly mentioning that we want to convert this, uh, this variable a into an integer data type. So let's go ahead and let's see. And also let's print out uh, the value of B to see what it is. System.out.println B. Right, now let me go ahead and compile the file. Uh, and let's see, Java C type conversion or Java. And you can see there's no error written here, which means uh, this code is correct. And then we'll go ahead and run the code Java data types. So three, 
3 is the output that, uh, that we have got. So what it done is basically it, it removed the fractional part from the number which is 0 0.2 and it print and it returned only this part over here before the dot which is 3. So it printed 3. So that is how you explicitly convert uh, one data type into another data type. Now let's take another example. Uh, let's take for example uh, double so double a equal to 3.2 and let's say we want to convert it into float. So how do we convert it into float? Uh, first of all, you look at the hierarchy. Float is a lower data type as compared to double. So what we need to do uh, when we are converting double to float is that we have to explicitly convert it, right? So what we have to do is we have to say uh, float, uh, let's say float b equal to, and you have to mention float in inside the brackets, inside the parentheses, like that, and then you have to say a, right? Uh, sorry, a. And that's how you convert a double to a float. Let's uh, go ahead uh, and uh, compile this and execute that. So no compilation errors and uh, there we go. 3.2 is a float data type value. So that's how you compile, uh, I mean convert a double to a float data type. So that is how you basically convert any one data type to another data type. Uh, you have to do it based on the hierarchy of the data types right there. And the next thing is you can see that there is a character data type. And you might be asking me, how can one possibly convert a character data type into an integer data type or a long or a float or a double data type, right? So this is where ASCII tables come into play. You know, characters are basically nothing but ASCII values. When a, when a character, you know, when you give an input or when you send a, a character into your computer, it cannot be understood by the computer as it is because the computer only understands as we know zeros and ones so what happens when a character is is given to a computer is first it is converted to its its, its ascii value and ascii value is nothing but a decimal value a decimal in the sense uh, a number without decimal number right uh, and then that integer value is converted into a binary form which is zeros and ones and that's how it's interpreted so for example for example let me write a comment here and explain you for example this capital A is a character and the the ASCII value of capital A here is 65. So it's universal. It's universal. It's same for every computer, right? So capital A, the ASCII value is 65. So what happens when when you give a character into your computer is that, for example, if you have given A or your your computer wants to deal with A, what it does is for it is it's it first converts it into 65 and then 65 is converted into its binary form, whatever the binary form is. I'm I'm not going to convert it into binary because uh, yeah, it takes a little bit time and I'm not good at math. So that's 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 the whole concept of uh, ASCII tables. And if you want to read more ASCII tables, you can just Google ASCII tables and here here we go. These are the ASCII uh, this is the ASCII table and uh, there you go. It starts from g 0 and uh, it goes until 255. So each each ASCII value has its own character. So this is the ASCII value, uh, this is the ASCII value, and this is the corresponding character, ASCII value corresponding character. So if you if you want to know about the English alphabets, uh, the small a you can see the corresponding ASCII value of small a here as you can see is 97 and small b 98. And same way uh, for the capital A, it's 65 65 goes for capital A. And all that stuff and for the digits also you have uh, I think it's from 97 to 122 Oh, 97 is this oh it's 48 I think yeah 48 there you go uh, 0 starts from 48 the character 0 I mean not the number 0 and 149 and 2 the ASCII value is 50 and so on so each and every character has its own ca uh, ASCII value as you can see this less than symbol has uh, the ASCII value 60 and space uh, also has an ASCII value this there we go 32 is an ASCII value of space so each and every character has an ASCII value and uh, yes it is quite possible now after understanding the concept of ASCII value that we can convert a character into an integer because what I mean when I said we can convert from character to integer is basically we can uh, convert a character into its ASCII value so how do you do that let's do it actually so um, what we are trying to do here by the way is we are trying to convert character into an integer and you can see character is a lower data type as compared to integer so we don't need to explicitly define anything right so we'll just say we'll just say character ch equal to let's say capital B is a character we want to convert into an integer and let's say int a or int b equal to uh, ch 
uh, that's pretty much it that's pretty much it you have uh, successfully converted it now let's go ahead and execute it compile it first and execute it java c no compilation errors and then there we go 66 is the ascii value of b if you want to cross check you can go to the ascii table and let's go to 66 yes 66 in is indeed the ascii value of capital b so that's how you convert character into an integer now what if you want to convert an integer to its corresponding character which means let's say you have an ascii value an ascii value which is an integer number and you want to convert it into a corresponding character the just the opposite of what you have done right now so what do you do in that case let's say i have uh, int a equal to uh, i don't know int a is equal to like, like let's say 69 int a is equal to 69 because 69 is my favorite number well uh int a is equal to 69 and you can say character ch equal to so how do you convert an integer to character type so you can see integer is higher than character so we need to explicitly define it so uh, to which data type are we converting integer right now we are converting it into character so what we have to do here is we have to mention character ch ar in the brackets and then type in a so what we are doing right now is we are explicitly converting the uh, the data type of a to uh, you know, no, we are actually explicitly converting the data type of th this value into a character data type, uh, right? So let's go ahead and once again, let's print ch here so that we get to know what the result is and let's compile it. So no compilation errors and e, e is the character which has the ASCII value 69. You can cross check it, uh, 69, yes, it is e. So yeah, that's how you that's how you actually convert one data type into another data type. We have also seen what is meant by ASCII tables and how, how do you possibly convert character into integer or vice versa. And boolean, obviously, boolean can hold true or false, so you cannot convert boolean to another data type. So one more data type is missing here, which is a string. So for string, things are a little different because string is, as you know, an array of characters or a sequence of characters. For example, uh, let's say you have a string something like uh, uh, string a equal to 23. So notice here 23 is not an integer, it's a string because we're enclosing it within double quotes and we have also, also specified string data type here. So it is quite possible for us to convert this value 23 into an integer, right? Because this is nothing but a number. So it's possible for us to convert it into an integer or let's say it has 23.9 and it's possible for us to convert into it into a decimal, but we cannot convert it, it into an integer because it's a decimal number or we can first convert it into a decimal number into a double or float and then we can convert it from there to int, right? It's possible. And uh, let's say if it has a capital A like this, so we know a single character can be treated as a character, so you can convert it into a character, and uh, yes, that's possible. But what if there's something like uh, this, this my name? So how do you possibly convert this this value into any other data type? It's not possible, right? You cannot convert this value into an integer because it's not a number you cannot convert it into a double or float because once again it's not a number you cannot convert it into a character because this is not a single character it's a sequence of characters so things are really different with string uh, i mean converting from string to any other data types or vice versa is really different with string and we'll be learning about that as we go on how to convert from string to another data type or from another data type to string so we'll be learning it as we go forward but for now this is uh, all you need to know about type conversion and we have successfully learned type conversion and how to implement it in java so in the next video we'll be doing it on python